Hello and welcome back to Frogboy X Wing Gaming. I'm Andrew, and today I want to talk about something a little bit important that I've really been thinking about, um, mainly this last week or so. So, if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get started with this. We as gamers, we cry wolf way too much these days. The industry no longer takes us seriously because we cry wolf, and then we run out and spend a whole bunch of money on skins in a game called like. Fortnite, or we play apex legends and we spend a whole bunch of money on that the industry no longer takes us seriously they do not take us seriously they don't they don't even care every single one of these guys are running to rush out the next games as service game that's going to line their pockets and they just don't listen to us anymore period so and the reason why i talk about this and we call it we cry wolf, wolf so much is cyberpunk 2077 it launched broken I played that game on the Xbox Series X when it launched, and I had a pretty decent experience with that. Um, I'll tell you what, after the patch that just came out, that's the first time I've ever been able to run around that game and explore that open world like I'd normally do in other open world games. And I wasn't running into the the people walking under the concrete. I wasn't seeing like T-Pose people. I wasn't seeing all the mini bugs and pop in and just distortion that was that would that would drive me nuts and just make me feel like gosh dude i just i don't i don't want to run around this place you know i don't i don't like seeing this stuff but now cyberpunk 2077 is a beautiful world to explore i love playing that game now i love i loved every minute of my time playing around in that world yesterday i've completed the game i've completed the whole story i've got as it sits right now almost 45 hours of of gameplay into cyberpunk's world i i like the experience that cd project red has been able to to bring us with this latest update like i am very happy with all three of the versions that i've been playing so hats off to, to cd cd project red thank you guys for fixing that game and not letting this become another anthem that really does make me happy now i will be able to enjoy this game and this story and get even further into the many different, you know, uh, skill trees and other stuff that they've brought for the characters. Because I'll be completely honest with you. When I played through the game, I just rushed right straight through the campaign content. Every time I'd go out, go off, do anything else, it, the, everything would just fall apart. The illusion would break. My immersion would, would break. My immersion now playing the game is so much better. So much freaking better. Like, I, I'm, I, I love it. I'm enjoying it. That's great. Not many games can turn themselves around to a point where where people are happy. And that's why we are talking about this today. I put out a first impressions for that game. I said the 30 FPS doesn't bug me. And it doesn't. It, it really doesn't. I played through the whole game um, start to finish. When it first came out, I played through that on the resolution mode. This was pre... You know, I mean, this was like right when I got my Series X. Um... The 60 FPS stuff just hadn't really caught on to me yet. Just hadn't really like ugh, pulled me to the pulled me that far to the center. But that's not the first game. Like this is like this is like four games in in like the last month. Okay, like four games, almost five games in the last month that have really turned things on its head for me again, and really made me start thinking like maybe I should start looking at each game individually. If they come with a resolution mode, if they come with a 60 FPS mode, what does the developer, what is the preferred choice? What what does the developer, how do they want me to experience their game? Now, I might, I, 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 this might sound a little weird, but I mean, if we're going off the beaten path, um, and just a heads up, CD Projekt Red is looking into uh, putting out a 60 FPS patch for the Series S. That's good news for a lot of people. A lot of people are going to love that. So I'm struggling right now. Okay. I said that, I said that with, you know, with Cyberpunk 2077 just the other night. Like I'm really struggling. Three weeks ago, 4K60 was, was like, oh, I got to have 4K and I got to have 60 FPS. And then Dying Light 2 hits. 
out of nowhere they come out and they're like oh this is going to be 1080p 60 and i'm like what 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 that stopped me in my tracks i was like i was so mad i didn't know should i should i just buy this game and then i was like yeah dude i got a lot of people out there you know on youtube that are that are, that, that are going to want to know they're, they're going to want to know i mean we've been waiting for dying light 2 for so many years now that how is it going to work out you know and then I, and then i told myself i was like all right it's got a resolution mode it's got a 60 fps mode let me just take a step back and check it out and boom lo and behold the 60 fps in that game wasn't that bad because i mean like playing playing some like you gotta understand man we just came from the console generation that like literally everything was 30 fps or it was a shaky 60 fps we've never really gotten like a like real solid 60 fps gameplay gameplay for like the last few console generations and like we came from getting 60 fps <laughs> pre-freaking playstation 3 you know what i mean so i'm just like wow dude it's amazing how much we can change and adapt as gamers as we go forward and what i mean by crying wolf so much <coughs> crossfire x crossfire x will undoubtedly re get a lot of content for that for that um for the multiplayer a lot of people are going to play that game a lot of people are going to like that game i have a feeling that crossfire x is going to be big but i mean i'm seeing on twitter people deleting tweets and then other people reposting them of once proud people like yeah crossfire x and then they're all deleting those tweets you know, and I've gotten a little bit of pushback of the score I gave that game. I gave it an 8. Do I still feel like it's an 8? Yeah, dude, I stand by that. I stand by that. That campaign cost me 20 freaking dollars. Okay, 20 bucks. That cost me $20. It was pretty polished. Uh, the shooting, I mean, it feels a little off or whatever, but me personally, I don't mind shooting from the hip in some games. As you can see through my live stream with... Um, with uh, cyberpunk i don't mind shooting from the hip it's, it's actually a little bit more challenging and a little bit more fun it looks cooler to me than aiming down the sights and having everything just this, the the front of an ugly looking gun sometimes i'm just like dang man i'd rather just shoot from the hip that's kind of cooler um certain games certain games you know like call of duty is really good at freaking um aim down sights stuff like that but a game like like crossfire x using bullet time and like shooting the enemies like that's cool that's cool like what they did in crossfire x remedy i like remedy man they're they're kooky they, they they pull off some weird stuff that just looks cool and i've been playing remedy games since like max Payne. so i mean i like to see the kind of stuff that they build and like these are some of the best looking character models they've ever built the Spectre campaign part of Crossfire X was pretty freaking cool, man. Like, I I liked it. It was short. It was sweet. It was simple. It looked cool. Like, the car blowing up destruction was freaking phenomenal. The fruit physics are amazing. Like, everything was in that game. But, I mean, people just can't see past their snobbiness these days. That they completely just write off complete experiences. And that's why I get so overwhelmed because me, dude, I don't write off a lot of experiences, man. I buy dang near everything. Sometimes I, I freaking put myself in a financial pickle to do that stuff too. I like these experiences. I like being a gamer. I love playing video games. When I tell you guys that a game is good, I usually mean it. Like I don't go out of my way to be like, oh yeah, this game is good. I don't shill for anybody. I'm not a, I, I don't shill. Uh, Chivalry 2 is probably by far one of my favorite online experiences that I wish that I wish that I could just sit back and play for freaking hours. And you know what? Torn Banner gave me code the other day for PS5. Now I have an excuse to sit back and stream that game because I love it. And then and the content they bring to Chivalry 2 <coughs> is literally freaking amazing. They don't ask me to pay for that. No, oh, they bring me all this freaking content, and it's like freaking solid. 
I'm like, wow, man, like whole big maps, new stories. Like, I love that. I love that about these kind of developers. CD Projekt Red, man. Like, yeah, they put out a buggy, busted, broken game. But every single one of the YouTubers on here were like, yeah, this is the best game ever. And then when it comes out and it's all broken, they're like, oh, well, they didn't, they didn't say anything. And I'm like, whatever, dude. Obviously, you thought it was a good game. Now you sit and trash it and trash it and trash it. Either stand by it. Either stand by your, your experience with that game or move along. You don't need to be reviewing games anymore. Stand by it or move along. I mean, if it was good for you, let people know, hey, guys, my experience was with was with the, was with the PC. It was a solid experience. They didn't show us the, the they didn't show us the uh, the console stuff. And that's exactly how I'd come of it. If they only gave me PC code and I reviewed it and it was solid. I would only review that for the PC. I'd be like, this is a PC review. Not be like, oh yeah, well this is for PlayStation and Xbox. And they didn't play it. They didn't touch it. But every single one of them, instead of just telling you guys, hey man, yeah, we reviewed that on the PC. It was a solid game. No, they all proceeded to come out and completely bash that game. But guess who's all back on the cyberpunk gravy train now that it's a solid experience. You guessed it. Every single one of them. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, dude, we need the clicks, man. So we're going to, yeah, dude, this is so great. And they're going to talk about it. And they're going to still kind of badmouth it and stuff. I am 100% happy, satisfied as a full paying customer for Cyberpunk. I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy. The stuff that they were able to do with that, I'm pretty happy. Like, I'm, I am I am pretty happy that I can, I can experience Cyberpunk from 30 frames a second at a native 1440p on my monitor all the way up to 60 frames a second at a dynamic 4k on my oled i'm happy and it looks good no matter which way i'm playing that i'm good and for some reason the 30 fps on that game just does not bug me it doesn't bug me i'm not i so i i've come to this conclusion over the last few games uncharted dying light 2 um crossfire x now the cyberpunk 2077 and you know when i said the fifth game possibly horizon forbidden west i'm actually to the point where i'm like hey man i want to see how this game plays at 30 frames a second i want to see how beautiful guerrilla games has been able like i want to see what they've been able to do visual wise on this game i love the first one i want to see do i want to play it in 60 frames a second yeah, I mean, like, Zero Dawn feels okay at 30, at 60 frames a second, but I just, like, it doesn't really, it didn't really change anything because of the camera position and all of that. Like, it does, it does change it, but it doesn't change it. So, yeah, I'm pretty optimistic about this game, and I get to start playing that tomorrow night. Like, I'm pretty pumped. I'm pretty hyped. And that's what I'm saying, man. Like, we cry wolf so freaking much these days. We cry wolf about 30 frames a second. We cry wolf about bugs and busted buggy stuff and it's like you know what you need to like really like take a breath take a breath man these are video games these are literal freaking video games they're made to entertain us they're made that they're, they're, we want we we demand like top tier graphics and we demand all of this stuff and we demand all of this in a 500 hundred dollar console and i'll tell you what man <sighs> I'm fine if if we're gonna get some 30 frames per second games with with some really solid visuals this generation you know with, with nanite whatever you know unreal engine 5 we already seen the base the baseline game for that and I felt mostly okay playing that matrix demo it, it didn't it didn't my biggest thing with 30 frames a second is sometimes if they're not done right they look stuttery like when I'm playing Dying Light 2 in the in the uh, in the quality mode, man, it makes me sick because it's just moving so much that it, it it literally makes me sick. It makes my eyes hard to focus on what's going on. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest problem I have with 30 frames a second. I love the way 60 FPS feels, but I'm gonna be completely honest with you. 60 FPS on on uh, on cyberpunk kind of makes me feel that way like like a little uh, like a little uneasy too i've always had problems playing first person shooters uh some work really good at 30 frames some work really good at 60 frames for me it just depends on the experience and that's where i'm at with this generation of consoles yes i'm gonna upgrade and get a pc whatever but where i'm at with 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 consoles right now is 
I love I love being a console gamer. I don't think that's ever gonna change. Yeah, I'm gonna get a PC and I'm gonna start. I'm gonna be able to check things out, you know, on that as well. But when it comes to it, man, like I'm I'm 40 41 years old and I still like to play console games. And I want these experiences to grow and get better and bigger and bolder and, you know, new technology. But in order for these companies to put out a solid product at a at a reasonable price, some things are going to have to get cut. Now, we have not seen either one of these two consoles completely fully tap into the full power of these next gen next gen feature sets. We haven't seen direct ML from xbox now that is going to definitely change things a lot it's going to help a lot with what's going on you hear the pc elitists all the time talking about oh yeah man like this game is so blah 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 and it's like dude you guys got it on dlss with it like kicked up to high you know what i mean like like yeah dude they 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 seem to care more about performance and i'll tell you what my experience with dlss is super for super performance looks just as bad as checkerboarding it looks pretty it looks pretty fuzzy to me, so, but quality mode looks freaking pristine. Though my PC just can't seem to do certain games with maxed out freaking quality, so, and it's fine. It is fine. Like, I'll, I'll get something bigger. I should have probably, I should have probably looked a little bit harder when I was getting what I got, but I wasn't even, I didn't even intend to buy this. I just saw it, and I was like, yes, let me just go ahead and grab it. The chip shortage, whatever, let me grab that. I need that because my old laptop that I had for doing these videos literally took two freaking hours to upload a 15-minute video. Now I can upload a 15 to 30-minute video in like eight minutes. So I'm happy. I'm happy with that. So all I'm saying is we do. We cry wolf so freaking much these days when it comes to video games and the experiences that we demand and we want. Yeah, man. It does, like, I'm not even going to lie. My heart sunk in my chest when I heard Dying Light 2 was 1080p. Like, that freaking, that literally had my blood boiling. But come to find out, like, that experience, the gameplay, the mechanics, the way it feels, I was so immersed in that game. The 1080p never, ever once bugged me. Never bugged me. Crossfire X, the simplicity of it, it never bugged me. It was fun. I could sit there and live stream it. And chat with everybody. Like, I did live stream the whole freaking game from start to finish. I, I live streamed both both campaigns. Um, and it was fine. Like, I had a good time playing that game. I do recommend you taking the time to to experience that. To have fun with it. To, to play the game. Like, it, it's a game. Quit taking everything so freaking seriously, man. Like, Metacritic scores don't really matter. What other... What, what I say, what other YouTubers say... In the end, it really doesn't matter as long as you're okay. Because there's so many games that I love that other reviewers were like, oh, man, that, that's trash. It's like, Bleh. I'm like, whatever, dude. And it, it is what it is. I just pray that when I review games for you guys, man, like, I don't want you to get mad and, like, freak out. Because all I'm ever doing is giving you my, my opinion on how I felt about the game. And sometimes I can be a little bit easy on games. Because sometimes, like, certain things, they... They might bug me, but as long as I'm immersed in that experience and I'm having fun and I'm and, I, and it's doing good, I think we all do it. I think we all overlook things for the things that we really love. But if it's something that we like and it's just completely like like that we kind of liked, you know, like yeah, dude, we have a tendency to be really hard on it. So I'm really thinking as I go forward, uh, I'm doing a review like a like a review casual and a review hardcore um you know the review hardcore will be more about like the visuals and the performance and all of that stuff and like the nitty-gritty of it and then the casual um review <clears throat> will be more about like the story and the content and how it was and how i felt with it and stuff so i think that's where i'm going to settle on this um how i'm going to review things so i might have to put two reviews out on some games or i'll just mix them in <clears throat> it just depends on the game so I'll probably just mix them in and maybe either do the hardcore stuff toward the end or the hardcore stuff at the beginning. I don't know. I still haven't decided on how I'm going to do that format. I think I'm going to start that one with Horizon Forbidden West. So if you guys like this content, man, and you made it this far, maybe one of these videos will be awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.